Not to blow anyone's horn or anything, but in case you haven't noticed, F1's a pretty big deal. The growing interest in F1 has led to an increased interest in the sport, and the question is being asked, should the grid be expanded from its 10 teams to a possible 11 or maybe even 12 teams? The main drivers behind this question are Andretti Racing, with the American-based team being the most vocal of all the teams looking to expand the grid. Well, it finally looks like the team could have some excellent news. Want to find out what the great news is and what it means for Andretti? And stick around to the end to find out about the latest changes Mercedes want to do to the W15. And we will be honest, the differences are pretty drastic. I think anyone who has been following the Andretti F1 entry saga has to give them big credit. The father and son duo have done everything possible to get an entry into F1, including going to Miami and asking teams to sign a petition to allow them to enter the pinnacle of motorsport. Let's just say it wasn't that successful and we don't think that any new future entrants will be trying that method. It's safe to say that the Andretti's F1 entry has split the F1 world, with many people viewing it as a great opportunity to have another team, and in particular, a truly American-based team. Before you come at us about Haas, let's be real, they're not really American-based. While other teams are saying that the grid is already far too packed for another team to enter, with traditional tracks like Monaco already being too crowded with 20 drivers. We're not sure what you would think of a new team joining the grid, but we're on the fence about this one. In an ideal world, we would love for Andretti to join the grid, but only if they are competitive. We can't really have another team propping up the back. The Haases are already doing a pretty good job at that one. There is also a small but kind of a big thing to note about F1, and that's that you can't just buy the shell of a car and stick an engine in it. It's not IndyCar, and the skills required to build a competitive car are pretty impressive. I mean, some teams have been in F1 for ages, and they still can't do it. Hard to think that a new F1 team will just walk in and be competitive. With all that said, it does look like Andretti is finally getting closer to an F1 team, but it looks like the new teams will always have their haters, and one of them is Toto Wolff. The Mercedes team principal is one of the strongest voices against Andretti, with Mercedes having this to say in a recent interview. I think why F1 and the teams have survived in the last years is because we all stuck together. The FIA, FOM and the 10 teams, we need to protect the sport. We're holding this sensitive sport that's growing at the moment in our hands. And that's why the right decisions need to be taken all of us together. When it comes to, let's say, a mindset, and then obviously the FIA and F1 when it comes to these decisions. Because it's out of the teams' hands, he said. But I would hope that Mohammed bin Salayem and Stefano will take the right decisions for F1. One, said Toto. So where exactly do we stand on the new entrant process? The sports governing body invited prospective new entrants to apply for an expressions of interest process earlier this year, and several parties took them up on that offer, hoping to grab a slice of the pie with F1 more globally popular than ever. The expression of interest process is just the first step in what Andretti and General Motors hope will end up with their cars on the grid, however, as to when or if that will happen still remains undecided. The FIA has always been more than open to teams joining the current Concord Agreement, allowing a maximum of 12 constructors, but the reception to their interest in joining Formula One remains cold amongst the current teams as the existing teams have shown hesitancy, most unwilling to risk diluting their own profits. While CEO Stefano Domenicali has said that only a team that will contribute to the further growth of the series will be accepted, with Formula One having the final say on any new teams. Andretti have answered every question thrown at them so far by promising a renewed interest from an American audience and having one of the biggest car companies in the world backing them in the form of General Motors. Meanwhile, it's no secret that F1 has been desperately trying to break into the US market, and it seems to have finally done so. A combination of the hit Netflix show Drive to Survive, making the sport more accessible, and a record three races in the US, including new venues in Miami and Las Vegas, means that America is a hot property in F1 right now. Adding a beloved team of US origin would undoubtedly make commercial sense. So yeah, you have to think from a pure commercial sense that this deal would really make sense. If F1 can crack the USA market, then the potential revenue will be huge. We all know the major stumbling block is the dilution fee, with many teams thinking the original $200 million fee is far too little. You would probably argue that they are right, with many thinking that it should be considerably more. If Andretti could somehow prove that their entry would generate more revenue, then I am sure that there would be no problem with their entry, but a calculation like that would be almost impossible. However, it's not all doom and gloom for Andretti, and actually there is some great news for them. As Andretti Cadillac are reportedly the final remaining contender to join the Formula 1 grid, 
with the governing body, the FIA, having thrown out three further applications. According to MotorsportTotal.com, only one team is left standing, that being Andretti Cadillac. MotorsportTotal.com suggests that Rodin Carlin, Hitech, and Lucky Sons were told that the information submitted was not sufficient for a positive evaluation. The FIA had this to say on the matter. The FIA would not specify who was behind each bid, but it did confirm that some of those who did apply are now out of the race and that there are other submissions still in play. A spokesperson said, The analysis of submissions from potential new entrants in the FIA Formula One World Championship has progressed and several candidates have now been informed that their application had not been approved. More information on other submissions will be provided in due course. It's still unclear exactly how the teams may have been rejected, but it's understood that the FIA requires not only financial assurances, but a plan that the project can achieve net zero CO2 emissions by 2030. Lucky Sons is said to have submitted further documents in a last ditch attempt, but the deadline for the tenure had passed. The FIA considers the rejection final. As according to reports, Lucky Sons CEO, Benjamin Durand, announced that it is actually willing to come up with a $600 million entry fee rather than the existing $200 million. With the news of our additional funding, we are delighted to inform that Lucky Sons is prepared to meet the team's request to pay a $600 million anti-dilution payment despite the current cycle of the financial regulations stating $200 million, said Benjamin Durand. Yeah, we agree that's pretty crazy, but as we said, F1 is a pretty big deal. So, would you take the deal? Not all the teams don't want Andretti to join. According to reports, they do have some support, with one of those being Michael's close friend, Zach Brown, and the McLaren CEO had this to say. I've not heard anything new recently, Brown told the media in Singapore. It's not been spoken about, so I think our view's unchanged, and we're just going to wait and see how the process plays out. I think the one thing I would say is the value of Formula One team and an entry from what it was five years ago is, the sport is worth substantially more, so I think that the elements need to be discussed, said Brown. Gunter Steiner, whose Haas team arguably has the most to lose should Andretti join the grid, was more in line with Brown, stating that he wants the anti-dilution fund raised in the next round of the Concord Agreement discussions. I haven't heard anything that it was accepted or not accepted. I don't know and I'm sure Stefano knows how to deal with this in our best interest. We put our faith in FOM to deal with it. As Zach said, the teams are now worth a lot more than when we were deciding the current Concord Agreement in 2020, where some teams were struggling to stay in business and were worth basically nothing so the market has changed. But in the end, I don't have any news about it so I just wait to hear and then F1 will do the deal for us, said Gunter. One thing is for sure, I don't think we've heard the last of this one. Now, one thing on everyone's mind is when do we see the end of Red Bull dominance and when do Mercedes wake up? Well, it looks like the team are doing some pretty drastic changes. Mercedes' team is still in a slight state of crisis. The German racing stable, which seemed untouchable between 2014 and 2021, has been a shadow of what it was since last year. The team were a second slower than Verstappen in Japan, and Lewis and George were clearly frustrated. The W14 has gone through major changes changes with the car being completely different for Monaco, and it looks like Mercedes are not shying away from the possibility of giving another concept a chance in 2024. We're certainly not clinging on to any concepts that we have had before. We're very open-minded. We are changing the car quite considerably for next year, but whether or not we can solve all the issues that we've got on the handling, that will depend on a number of projects delivering. They're underway and they're not complete. We've got some good directions to try and improve that, Shovelin says.